bola. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, Instagram Live. Welcome, Union Nation. Uh, my name is Kevin Casey, public address announcer for your Philadelphia Union. We are here tonight at the friendly confines of the Proving Grounds, where the Philadelphia Union uh, Youth Academy is running their Union PPP program, which we'll talk a little more about. And it's my pleasure to have a very special guest with us tonight. We have a winner of the 2002 World Cup for Brazil and Japan. We have a, a former member of the Manchester United Red Devils, and of course, we remember him as a member of the Philadelphia Union, striking that memorable free kick against Toronto in 2013. It's my pleasure to welcome Cleverson. Cleverson, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. So, yeah, so we're going to have about a half hour here, Cleverson. We're just kind of going to talk. I'd like to talk a little bit about your playing career talk a little bit about uh, the Union Academy and what you're doing with that, talk a little bit about this program out here tonight, and sort of maybe even get into what the current state of the Union looks like this year as well, right? So, and then we also have some um, questions from some fans that we have as well that we're going to okay. be asking as well. So let's start with your playing career. So let's start 2002 Japan World Cup, right? Um, group stage, you, you don't see the pitch very often in, in the group stage, right? But then in the knockout stage, you become an almost indispensable part of that Brazilian squad. So what was what was the transition there that Scolari sort of uh, called your number there in the knockout stage? Oh, it's funny because in a first game in the World Cup, uh, I was not any chance to, to play. I was there like just like to be part of the team, you know, to get some uh, experience so I can play like the next World Cup in uh, 2006. Yeah. You know? And then, but... I saw the, the the competition start. I started to see like everybody like uh, enjoy that moment. I started to feel okay. I think I have a chance to play. I can I can play like five minutes, ten minutes, and do well. Probably have a chance. Chance. And then Brazil play good. Uh, we have a solid team, but we not have a, like a, too many guys can defend on on the field, and uh, no too many guys support like the art on the right side like Cafu. And then um, Philippe's choice to me to play there to help Cafu. Yeah. And then uh, I went to Juninho space, Juninho Paulista. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I, the first game, when I entered the game, I crossed the ball to Ronaldo. Ronaldo scored the goal. And then after that, I started to get more opportunity. And then the dreams come true. That was a great, that was yeah. a great memories. Yeah. Semi-final, uh, or maybe the round of 16 against England, there's a, there's a timely tackle on Paul Scholes, right? Yeah. Who's a, was he, I guess he was, was he a future teammate of yours, or was he already gone? Yeah, there? future. And as soon as I get there, I say, hey, I tackled you with that game. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so in the final, now you're playing Germany, right? Yeah. Um, you hit the bar at one point, right? Yeah, I hit the post. I hit the post, but then you assist Ronaldo's goal, right? Assist Ronaldo, yeah. I, I, I always talk with the guys, say, I could not score first the Ronaldo. I have to be understand, okay. All right. I just hit in a post just to give some emotion, but yeah, yeah. the guy that woke up this Ronaldo. Yeah, right. I'm happy with the assist for him. <laughs> so it's a two nil win and you go all ninety in the final, right? Yeah. Talk to us about what that yeah. feeling is like of getting across uh, over that mountain and, and winning that World Cup and, and, and raising that trophy. What was that like for you? It's a, it's a hard to so you wake up on that. Looks like you're in a dream. Because like uh, we went to play like World Cup, I play like a like a Ronaldo, Ron, Ronaldinho, Rivaldo, uh, Close, uh, those guys like Post Close, Beckham. I play with those guys all on the video game yes. before I go to World Cup. Wow. Yeah. And then like uh, two years, I saw those guys around me here, and then I was thinking like, I'm a dream, I'm some dream. But when you achieve that, when you get in that, we get one like a out self confidence, you know, because if you, you start to think, oh, if I'm here, because I'm not like a better than them, 
but I'm close to them. Let's like uh, put on my style. Let's do confidence the thing I have, do my best and play for the people like me. Like uh, my family, uh, friends for my, my teams in Brazil. I try to do everything perfect so that people see all. Oh, he pre- represented me on the World Cup. And then that's amazing when you achieve that. Because yeah. win the World Cup, that's not many players has the opportunity to touch the trophy, to have the opportunity to defend your country. Uh, and in the end, everything's got a perfect. Oh, it was amazing. It was a great experience, a great learning yeah. for me at that time. And soccer is a game that, that evolves around that confidence, right? You yeah. hear oftentimes about world-class players who are in form with confidence, and then they, they, they sort of lose it, right? So, yeah. you know, to have that confidence. So, so you have that confidence, and like so many players who have great World Cups, Europe comes calling, right? Yeah. And then you find yourself playing at that time, really, at one of the, the top, top clubs. Yeah, you exactly. still are, obviously, yeah. right? But Manchester United. So talk to me a little bit about how uh, Manchester United comes calling it. I know this involves Ronaldinho <laughs> a little bit, right? Yeah, that's the that's the so funny story because in a, uh, Ronaldinho started the conversation for Man United because Beckham was supposed to leave the Man United and then they tried to find like a player to play uh, on the right side for for Man United and they Man United decided to bring like a top player like Ronaldinho and then uh, I am in Paris and then we play against France before the before the game. Ronald Hughes called me in his room with his brother, Aziz, and then he told me all. Oh, Man United won Ronaldo. Ronald Hughes got wish for that. But Ronald Hughes won your comments also there with Man United because Man United want you two to play there because you guys did well in the World Cup. And then I say, oh, really? And me? I say, yeah, okay, I'm going. And then we start that conversation. After that, I back to Brazil. Ronald Hughes back to, the, to the, his club. And then um, one year later, I went to Manchester, and then Ronald, you went to Barca. He goes to Barca. Uh, and then, like, like a second time when I saw him, I say, hey, Ronald, you not forget something? He said, no, oh, oh, you bring me the money night, like, a, like the couch rain every day, cold, and then he went to the Barca, <laughs> like, yeah. enjoy, like, the... <laughs> Oh, oh, it's funny. Easter. That is funny. Yeah. But so, so you signed with, with Man United in 2003, and, and there was uh, a pretty good player you signed alongside of, right, that was with you as well, and that's Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Yeah. So when, when you signed with him, right, in those early years, could, could you see the type of player he was going to become at that point? When I saw Ronaldo the first time, when I go to the room, like to the, to the switch, and then I had to sign the contract, I saw Cristiano Ronaldo on the side, and then I asked him for my uh, representative. He said, oh, who's that guy? He said, that's Cristiano Ronaldo. He's signed, he also going to be signed at the same time with you. He's a very talented player. He's a very good, has a lot of room to improve, but he's a very promise for Man United. And I said, oh, good. And then I talked talk to him, and as soon as I got the first training session, I saw him, his training, some drill he did. I said, my God, who's that kid? And then, um, of course, he's going to be like a top player because he went to the top team like Money Night. He has the top coach, yeah. Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah. And around him, has like top players yeah. like Ryan Giggs, Paul Scholes, yeah. Ruth Bannister Roy, later Wayne Rooney jumped there. And then everything is like a help Cristiano Ronaldo yeah. to make uh, the player he's, yeah. he's uh, wearing now today. Right. Because he's, but he's a work, he's a work hard, he's training. He's like commit a lot with like um his training with some everything in the field, and then he's deserved the thing he has because he's yeah. he's a very talented player. What was, what was one of the one thing you said you would you, you took from Sir Alex? I mean, obviously one of the great soccer minds of, of, of all time, right? So so having had that experience of playing under him, is there anything that you sort of took away from that experience and, and learned about the game from him? I think the more I, one thing I learned with him is how he's managed the old group he has because that's not like a that's not easy group to have we yeah. have like a because when they have a, like a a window for uh games like a europa games in brazil going to brazil, every players go to play to national teams no one stay there right and then when they everybody go back like a 22 players everyone is a start 
on uh, your national team. And then we go back in the Man United, they want to be start the game also. Imagine wow. for Sir Alex Ferguson manage everything there. And then he did well. He did well because he organized like a who is going to be leader, yeah. who is going to be the second leader, yeah. which your job, which your responsibility, when you're going to be play, when you have to be ready, when you're not, that kind of stuff. He is amazing on that. And then I learned a lot on that one. How is the uh, promote the leadership? That's perfect. That's it's great. almost like uh, reminiscent of uh, Phil Jackson, the coach of the Chicago Bulls, when Jordan, that, like that, just being able to manage personalities, right? So mm. it seems like uh, that's kind of the same concept there. Yeah. We're, all, we're all talents, right? But now you got to manage those personalities. Yeah, exactly. So uh, after a spell uh, in Europe, you come back and, and uh, come back to Brazil, play for a while. And then in 2013, uh, a little, uh, this is a little tip that I got from Ryan Sanders that uh, you were <laughs> traded straight up for Freddie Adu. <laughs> <laughs> Sanders. I <laughs> <laughs> mean, make sure I threw that. Uh, you, do, you come, you come and play for the union in 2013. Yeah. And everybody remembers, um, really, one of the uh, milestone goals scored in union history. Right? It's October 13th, 2013. We are in probably the fourth minute of stoppage time. Uh, I believe it was Antoine Hopeno, right? The, the pride of Princeton University yeah. uh, gets tripped up about 25 yards out. Right? Yes, exactly. And then it's you and, and uh, Ring of Honor inductee Sebastian Latou on the ball. Yeah. Now, what's that conversation like? Like, who, who, who's saying, I got this? One. I got this. What's, you remember? Was, yeah, I remember that. I, I remember like today. Yeah. Because as soon as the balls, the referee gave the foul, I run straight to the ball to grab the ball. And then I saw Sebastian Latou coming to get the ball. Right. Right. And then he started to talk with me. And then I like a, just focus on the ball. And then I didn't tell anything to him. And then I think he's like, oh, okay. And then he's walk away. <laughs> and then they leave the ball for me. But we, we train a lot that. Yeah. Uh, I remember here, when I got here, I got me, uh, Roger Torres, yeah. and also Liu Fernandez. We always have like, some competition yeah. after the training session yeah. on a free kick. And then we train, you train a lot. As soon as I, I saw the free kick, I said, let me take that one. I don't want to be lose that one there. Yeah, and then... What a placement on it, yeah. right? And, and it just uh, the atmosphere in, in uh, I guess it was PPO Park then, right? It was just fantastic. And yeah. Probably, I, I was just talking to you before, it's, it's still probably one of the top five goals <laughs> in Union Club history, I think, when we do those, those rundowns, right? There's Carlos Ruiz goal uh, that's sort of in there as well, but that uh, Cleverson free kick will <laughs> always be in that, that club lure. So yeah. um, really remember that. Now, obviously, we're, we're here tonight because we want to talk a little bit about the academy. We want to talk a little bit about this Union PPP program. So you joined the academy in 2017. Uh, and I think really my question is, having had all of this success with the World Cup and, and, and European football and all of that, what was it about the Union Academy that brought you in, in into the fold here and said, I want to be part of this? I think the, the old project the Union has, like to build like a, a young players, home-growing players, Though this project like uh, show me like uh, I can come here and help to grow in that yeah. because like uh, we have a lot of good kids here around here, right? And everyone's gonna be play soccer. Everyone's gonna be player. They work hard, right? But uh, the experience I have in the field, to where they're from, from Brazil, like a poor family, like uh, and then have opportunity to teach those kids. Yeah the high level like how you get together i feel like so happy to come here yeah and then i went and when i sit down with steve graham and also tommy wilson and then they told me like a come to union uh bring it all like experience you have in the field teach those kids to play soccer yeah. do your the best and then i say yeah i can go there but i learned a lot i have a lot of things on them uh on the, my mind to teach those kids, but one thing I teach them more for the young, the young players, it's a uh, love the game. They need love the game. They cannot like go, go in the field just like oh yeah, I want to win that game. You can win the games in many, many ways. So can win the game, but it has to be winning for fun. Yeah, it has to be like okay, I'm doing so great because I scored that goal because did my team work with me and then uh, I'm happy. Not because like a. Uh, run like just with the ball in the score. No, something yeah. like a special has to be yeah. behind for that one. 
And then I like to work with the young kids because the, when I start to talk with them and they look in the eyes, they look at me and then they see the confidence when I talk. Yeah. And I say, oh my God, I have some responsibility yes. here. Let me throw something I pass on those kids for those kids. That's the, the best way like, uh, I feel to teach those kids. It was great to hear you before we uh, started this. Uh, we were talking and, and you were talking about that joy, right? And, mm. and you mentioned Ronaldinho and the joy that he just mm. played. And, and you see some of those highlights that he has. When he's on a pitch, he just is just having, he's a kid again, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's a, almost a, a sort of uh, ingrained in that Brazilian yeah. mentality where it's just fun for you. Yeah, guys, right? Yeah. Like it's fun for when you're coming up, right? Yeah, yeah. I saw, I, I sent to my players like uh, yesterday one clip about Ronaldinho, yeah. about like uh, his talk about he always a kid. He's growing, but he's still kids on the yeah. field. He's still having fun. And boys on that age has to have a ball on his feet and enjoy. Like uh, the best, mo I told my boys when I on the game, the best moment in the game when you have the ball. You have to take care of the ball. Do the things you want. If you want to mag someone, if you want to dibbling, do it. You, you're going to be making mistakes. But make you sure you try to fix that mistakes after. But don't like a play like a way, just like a, you don't like this one. Enjoy. And then yeah. the boys love that. Love that. What was it like? So compare your experience. So I guess you're, you're, you're growing up in Brazil in the 90s, right? Mm. Uh, what was that like developing compared to what we see in America now with sort of this really organized, formalized system. Was it like that for growing up in Brazil? Or was it more just sort of uh, the kids, you know, and everybody played, so you just kind of grew up playing that way? Yeah, Brazil is a little bit different because like um, uh, kids in Brazil like a brief soccer. They just, that's not like here have a lot of good sports around, like baseball, basketball, or, uh, in Brazil is own soccer, yeah. soccer, soccer. And then we learn, when I was a kid, a lot of soccer on the street. We play in the street. We play for friends. We play in a field where the uh, field is not great. Right. That's no rules on the game. That's no foul. That's no cry. That's no your, oh, my daddy, come here helping me. That's right. not. That's yeah. no coaching. You learn with your friends just with a ball yeah. okay. and the field, you know? And then change a little bit now because now I think the, the kids has a lot of like technology now, yeah. have cell phones, like social media, a lot of stuff like uh, uh, get attention for the players, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, but uh, here in America, I think here they have the all like uh, uh, material to make a good players. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't have a, like a, a yet like a, the best player, a yet, but they have a lot of coachings around. Right. Try to teach the, those kids to make it be better. Yeah. Maybe like a, the generation you're working now, in two years or six years, they're going to be much better. If, yeah. you, if you watch like a, a MLS league, when I come here 2013, that's no compare like the, the team is really? here today. Yeah. Because you saw a lot of good signs on the teams. Good coach. Now the teams for MLS will try to take a coach from England, for Argentina, a lot of play, plays. Yeah. They bring like a, a different style of players. Right. And the teams in America here try to look to grow, to make a home grow players. And that's the way the soccer is going. Yeah. Yeah. Because the uh, those players, they're gonna be like a show, they style to play like in the future, yeah. you know? And imagine like a Ibrahimovic, they come to here to play to, to LA, right? Yeah. A lot of kids learn that kind of drill, or that kind of goals, Ibrahimovic score. And then they're gonna be growing with that, right? That's a great learn yeah. for, for those kids. But I think the United States is on a good way to make a, uh, better soccer players because they have all support i believe like um uh united states in, a, in the future is going to be like a maybe a top five league yeah and uh and a whole world of soccer no? yeah I, th you, I think we're sort of in unprecedented times in the united states if you look at the amount of americans achieving 
a Champions League level. Yeah. We never <laughs> experienced that growing yeah. up, you know. So just seeing that now, the Pulisic, the Weston McKennies, and guys like that yeah. uh, that are just being able to achieve, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, but let's get back and talk a little bit more about the academy. So the, the Union Academy obviously has, has – garnered a lot of attention right brendan aronson mark mckenzie being the uh the two biggest names that have that have gone on to european uh play what is it about the union academy that sort of sets them apart and makes them just a little bit different because i think we probably have i think it's probably us in, in dallas that have the two best reputations so what is it about the union academy that, that that's just a little bit different yeah i think um first we have a great staff like uh good coachings Good organization, great director, uh, director for the first team. Also, we have a, like a a good methodology, like a, to play like a as a group, to play like a with a lot of faster things in the field. Yes. And then uh, also we teach the young players to believe they can make a good soccer player. Not only like a. Um, a good soccer player, but a good study. We have like a YSC academy when the boys go to school mm -hmm. and then train in the morning, also train in the afternoon. We have the all like uh, support for the players and uh, nutrition, like a uh, physical. We have like some like a, we record clips. We send information to the players every training session. Mm -hmm. We have a reflection. We have like a report in the games. We have sometimes coaches like every Monday sit down and work to work with the top prospect. We have some IDPs for those players. We did a lot of working to make those players mm -hmm. better. And the players believe in that. That's why our academy get better. Yeah. Like not, not only because we work hard, we do well, but the players we start to see, oh my God, that, that, those guys work hard to make them better. Yeah. Like me make a pro with those guys. And then that's why, that's why you get like a good players on the first team, yeah. sell Brendan Harrison, and it's still coming good players in our academy. I have the group away. We bring those group in Brazil. They did amazing there. They compete against like a players for the streets. Right, right. And then uh, do the same drills and style they did it. Yeah. And then uh, that's the, I think we have a good way to go, yes. but that's perfect for us. So you guys might remember, uh, and Cleverson and I were talking about this before we came on, but that, that club uh, that he took to Brazil, and I guess they were U12 when you had them down there last yeah. year, but there was a highlight package of the goals that these kids were scoring that went viral on social media, not only within our area, but nationally with all of these big soccer uh, brands and, and things like that. Um, and it was just awesome to see, like, that's our guys. <laughs> and I think a lot also needs to be said by the openness of, uh, you know, the, the philosophy that Ernst Tanner and Jim Curtin have of using the home drones, right? Yeah. You know, we're, we're putting these guys right to work right away. And, and I think with the success of Aronson and McKenzie, we're only going to be drawing in more talent, correct? Exactly. And, and grow, right? Yeah, that's the way because of we have a good players yeah if you work in that if you have a good methodology you got good support for those guys right they're gonna be achieved yeah and more young you achieve more better gonna grow in the, in the, in the future i remember my first game when i played pro i was 18 years old and then i went to the stadium like a, a colminero against cruzeiro total full like a, a six thousand people in the stadium yeah and then people's you <sighs> scream i'm 18 years old and then I, I don't care. I just want to join the yeah. join the field and play right. and having fun. Seize the moment. Yeah. And so we're we're here tonight. It's Friday night. Um, we're, it's the proving grounds and and this newer program, right? The Philadelphia Union Youth that we've kind of um, established over the last year, kind of almost uh, feeding into and, and, and adopting that that um, philosophy of the Union Academy with this uh, select program, completely club neutral, right? These kids are coming out on Friday nights. They're playing with their clubs back home. Opportunity possibly to play on a, a select team in the summer. Talk to me a little bit about, if you are a club player, why you should be here tonight at this part of this union PPP or seeking out the opportunity. Talk to me a little bit about what those club players are going to see when they come here. I think uh, those players coming here, it's a very important for them coming here first and enjoy. Yes. Enjoy to, to make a new friend, yeah. to play like a on a different atmosphere, okay? 
And then I think one thing I've learned on our skid, maybe when you join a field, you have some uh, uh, kind of like a star moment, you know? Maybe like you come in a field and then you get here, you see, oh my gosh, I think I feel some power here. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes. And then they play, you know? Yep. Because the young kids, they need to get out a little bit like a outside the box, yes. you know? Because when you play only one team, you have only one friend, yep. okay? He has to see, okay, let go to move to the next step. Yeah. And then he come in here, he make a new friend, say, oh, those kids, they know how they play. Let's pass the ball to him. Yeah. They play back to me, okay, let's pass all. And then he create like some um, good relationship yeah. on those plays. But the program we have here was amazing because we can, as soon as you get here, you can see the organization. 100%, yes. You can see like uh, the, how the coach struck the game. And then you start to see, oh, I didn't know I can play that. Just because the coach makes some instruct right. and a different team was right, make your confidence to play. Yes. That's why I encourage the kids, the young kids coming here. Yes. All right. Don't get nerves. All right. Having fun. Right. Coming to here to enjoy. Right. Yeah. And then if you enjoy, you're going to be played without no pressure. Yes. Because it has to be played soccer with no pressure. That's the way you can get better when you are a kid. Yeah. And having a son that's in the program here, the one thing that I've noticed is the positivity of, of the coaching staff and how that builds confidence. And then the other thing I love is the philosophy. And um, Mike is constantly being told, attack with the ball, attack mm. without the ball. Yeah. And I love that philosophy of, of allowing them to express themselves and be creative, right? Yeah. And, and be okay with it now. I think that almost builds that confidence. As yeah. Well. All right. So what I want to do next year, and I got to open my phone to do this, is we've, we've got some uh, fan questions that we want to ask. Whoa. You. All right. So we'll get into this next. So we have a question here from. Um, let's see. Oh, we have a question here from Walid uh, Busaria, and I know I did probably didn't get that name right. So he wanted to know that when you were a youth player, what did you have to do to meet the requirements? of becoming an outstanding player and reaching the levels that you did. So I guess as a player, or as a young as a young boy growing up, what was sort of that, that made you different that, that got you to those next levels? I think the difference to make the next level, it's uh, listen the older players in the field. Mm -hmm. That's one thing make you different. Yeah. More you listen like uh, the older players, more you observe him, yeah. more you see how he walk, how he play, how his behavior in the field, more you're gonna be growing. Because uh, when I was in the academy, I always looking for like a, a player. He played for Brazil national team. I went to the field and every time I'm looking at him, I see what kind of movement he did. I see how his walk right. on uh, getting out of the car. How he's like a behavior with those guys, how he's like he's talking to everybody, and then he say, Oh, yeah, I want to do like that. Yes. And then that helped me to get like a good personality because the, the, the people can see, okay, if the kid's doing well, because he have a good way. That's one thing I listen to all the ones. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's almost a, success, a recipe for success in anything. It's find that mentor, right? That, yeah, exactly. That person that you can partner with. All right. Um, the next question that I have here is um, from Liam Holtzman, and Liam asks, "What is your train? What was your? I guess what was your training schedule and diet growing up, or or even as you were playing? Ooh, when I was playing, or I was like, let's, a, let's let's do this more from a standpoint of what was your training schedule like as a, as a young man at the, where these guys are? Uh, that's very simple. I play soccer in the morning, play soccer in the afternoon." play soccer in the night yeah that's the that's it. the only thing because i uh, the schools in brazil is a little bit different in the year like the schools in brazil start like uh eight in the morning into a 12 and then the rest of the day we don't have anything but when i was in school one friend of mine bring the ball and then we have a break in uh, each class of course you're going to be playing uh, yeah. on uh soccer and then in the afternoon when I need to go home, I never go home. Right. I stay in the field and play soccer. And then the night, we still play, you know? And then uh, watch a lot of games, of course. Who I think right? um, I didn't watch Pelé play m right. much because I was a little uh, young. I just like uh, see the clips. Yep. 
but Zico I watch more because that's the that's the ones growing and then see like Zico play in the Maracanã and score yeah. amazing goals. Yeah. But those those two guys like as my idols for that one. I love it. Yeah. All right, let's do let's do one more here and then uh, we're gonna finish up with it with a little game that I have here. No pressure at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. So the next question that I have here is from. Um, let's go to. Uh, Jacob Marks. Jacob Marks asked, "What was the most memorable match that you ever played?" Oh, the memorable. My gosh. Oh, I think that there's no chance to compete against in the final oh, World final, Cup. Right? Yeah, yeah, that one's like a. Because their way, not only the way they played, but the way the people prepared me for that game. Because uh, I'm the young one yeah. on the team yeah. with Ronaldo, or I don't know, Gaúcho. But the way the people prepared me for that game was amazing. Because we have the team talk before the game. And then we, I remember have a Ronaldo, Roberto Carlos, Rivaldo, Ronaldo, those guys in the on the locker room. And then I'll imagine Felipe Scolari you're gonna be talking oh, Rivaldo, you gotta be take the ball, decide yourself, create some opportunity, Ronaldo. And then Felipe, don't say that. They start the meeting say, Cleberson, everybody gonna be marked. Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Rivaldo. You are the only three in the field. Play like you played in Atletico Paranaense. I said, what? Wow. Okay. I like that. Let's do it. And then bring me some, some great power for that one. Because I really think like you're going to be struck like the players, top players to decide the game. And yeah. no, he come for the young player and they say, oh, nobody going to be marking you. Play like you play in your team. And then that's why in the game, I'm totally free. free. I get a lot of balls. I hit the ball in the post. Before I hit the ball in the post, I have a two chances with my left. I've missed the goals. And then I'm so confident yes. in that game. But yeah. because the coach and the staff, they give that confidence. And no, then no that's yeah. the... All right, we are just about out of time, but I do want to finish up. So we're going right. to play a little game here, all right? Oh, so my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Mm. All right, now, now the object here is for you to just decide right away, right? Okay. Some of them is going to be two choices. I'm going to ask you a question. So we'll start off with an easy one. You ready? Mm. Cat or dog? It has to be decided what? You, yeah. you pick one. Cat okay. or dog? Dog. Dog, all right. <laughs> Superman or Batman? Oh, Batman. Batman, all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have to start a club with one Brazilian soccer player not named Pele, who are you taking? Oh, God. Oh, my God. That's a tough any, one. Any, any era? In Brazil? Or? Yeah. Oh. Any Brazilian? My God, that's a tough that's one. That's a tough one? Yeah. All right. uh, we'll come back to that one. Okay, right. yeah. That, that one, I mean. Yeah. All right, ready? Um, Ronaldo, Ronaldo or Messi? Messi. Messi. Oh. Yeah. I asked that question. I asked that question. <laughs> I know some guys celebrate. Jim Curtin said to win one match, Ronaldo, to have on your team Messi. That was his that was his response. Yeah, right? Messi to play beautiful. All right. Sorry. Two choices here. Tracking back on defense, 40 yard sprint to make a game saving tackle, or a game winning restart goal from twenty five yards out. Which For, one? First one. The, yeah, the tracking back. Yeah, uh, like that's that. Lunch pail. That's what I did it on World Cup. Yeah. That's what I want. Gold, that's right? what I yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, favorite Philly sports team not named Union? Uh, 76. 76ers? Yeah. Yeah. Oops, guy. All right. If you didn't become a pro soccer player, what would you have become? What um, would you have wanted to do? Musician. Musician? Yeah. Really? Same? Yeah. Yeah. No, no swing. I'm more like an instrument. Yeah? Yeah. Do you play an instrument? Uh, or- they call Cavaquinho. That's a little yeah. like bandolin. Okay. Yeah. Like string th- yes. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Uh, I'm not great, but uh, that's my ho- my hobby sometimes. All right. Two more, and then you're off the hot seat. What we call this the hot oh, seat, right? Okay. Favorite European club team? Uh, Man United. Man United. Right? Yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> you played for me. <laughs> All right. Here's the last one. You ready? Okay. Next member of the union organization to go to Europe. Oh. I think Paxton. Paxton. Also, give me give me one name from the academy that we might not know yet that we should, as a union fans. Mm. 
like the Brendan. It was, and it's interesting. I'll let you think. You know, you watch some of these videos of of Mackenzie and Aronson yeah, in, yeah. in Fontana when they were young guys, right? Yeah, in the yeah, academy. Yeah. So who's the next Aronson Mackenzie Fontana coming out? Of the uh, I think I have one very young. His name is Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan. Yeah. All right. Is he with you? Mm-hmm. Even in young? the beginning, he was me, but now he played up. Now he's playing up. Yeah. All right. So you heard that, guys. Kevin Sullivan <laughs> is the name to remember. All right. Well, that wraps up our time. Cleverson, thank oh you so gosh. much for your time. We really Thank you. appreciate it. <laughs>